Hey guys, it's Cass and welcome back to my channel. We are already filming the August wrap up, which feels crazy. August has just flown by. Honestly, it feels like the whole summer did. Um, I'm going to be going over all of my August reads, which of course, as always, timestamps below. We're gonna do August reads, um, current games I'm playing, and just some other life update stuff that I include in these wrap ups. First, I'm gonna go over, you know, just updates and then games I played, and at the end of all of this will be all the books I read throughout the month because. I tried to do something a little bit different this month where I filmed a review as soon as I was done or a day or so after I was done reading the book instead of sitting down to kind of show you and flip through them all and talk through them all. So I tried it a little different this month. We'll see how it goes. First, we'll go over the games I'm currently playing, which as always is Minecraft. And not only am I on SMP, I'm trying to get something else started. Um, I haven't been on my hardcore world in probably over a year, maybe at this point. Um, so maybe I'll go back to that at some point. I'm not sure. However, the thing I've been playing the most has been without a doubt Cuphead. Um, and they just came out with a season two update, I believe, as well as they did. I don't watch the cartoon, but my son does. They came out with the season two of the cartoon. I think it's on Netflix. Um, I've never seen it, but I recently got into playing the game and I've been playing it with my husband and it's been kicking our butt and we've been doing the levels on simple, which you can't beat the game until you beat the levels on regular because you have to get the soul contracts, which if you don't know anything about the game, I would highly recommend looking it up, but it's a lot, not in a bad way, but it's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be and it's like in a fun laughing kind of way, at least me personally, I don't get angry about video games, so I'm not one of those people, but I I am getting frustrated with it in the way that I'm like laughing and it's just kind of feels a little bit impossible. But I was feeling that way and we've made it through the first world um, on simple. We haven't even beat one on regular yet. And then my son wanted to start one with me, so I started a world with him um, where I mug men in that one we play with him or at least i sit down to play with him we get through the whole first world in an hour we're able to take out every boss on regular the first try like and that's not me that's him and honestly more power to him and i commend him a lot because the game is so difficult as a two player i couldn't imagine being a single player um and then beating it in regular, like honestly, like mind blown wild, was not expecting it to be that simple for him, <laughs> which in turn obviously made it simple for me. But, so I've been loving Cuphead, and then the only other thing I've really been like deep diving on is Mario Galaxy. Um, I think I mentioned that last month too, because I have the, little Switch game that has like Nintendo 64, Mario Odyssey, and then Mario Galaxy. Um, so I'm replaying Galaxy because I haven't played it since it came out on the original Wii when I was in high school. So that's what I played. Um, and then life updates. I don't have much to update about in August. Still going through some things. I had a really good month going through some things. Um, but I'm filming this on the last day of August and today was a very difficult day. I am so sorry if you can hear my son yelling. He's like playing with Legos and yelling up in his room. Um, but today has been a very difficult day emotionally. Um, and this is kind of like another life update is I got a part-time job. I just work a couple minutes from the house. However, everything I'm doing is with plants and flowers and indoor plants and things with nature. Um, but I work from five to two. So I work nine hour shifts. It's been, today was hard. <laughs> today was hard because I wake up so early and I'm so tired and I am so sensitive to sleep. Um, if my sleep gets messed up or I don't get enough sleep or I'm tired, like 
my brain especially since getting the TBI just like does not function very well at all and it really puts me into like a limiting space it honestly feels like the most extreme version of dissociation I have ever experienced because it feels like I'm not there and that is not probably a good thing um it feels like I'm kind of just like floating in a dreamlike state, if that makes any sense at all. That was today. However, overall, the job has been phenomenal. I've learned, I've been on this deep dive for a while about, you know, a couple months on the language of flowers and the Victorian era of the language of flowers and the modern take on it. And I have another book downstairs, and obviously that's one of the books you will see in here that I read a novel version of it, so not really about that. Um, but I connect so much with just flora in the world, and so I'm actually really liking my job. Um, and it's really pretty easy to do. I don't have to answer to anyone. I just take care of plants all day. I educate people about plants. Um, and flowers and I'm able to, it's not like creating arrangements or anything, I'm not doing any like floral design or anything, but it's about like plants that you plant in, in the world, in the earth and house plants and just, it, it's been such a healing thing for me to be able to get back into nature because I unfortunately sometimes I'm such a homebody, like I'm fine to never leave the house and I will isolate and I will be by myself in a dark corner and just exist. Um, I fall really prone to that when I'm emotionally not doing the best, which has been the majority of this year so far. So this job has been nice to push me out of that place, to get me in the sun all day, to get me working with my hands, to get me working with nature in nature has been phenomenal. Today, however, like I said, was just difficult because I just, I've had a lot of dreams the last two days. Well, I've not been getting good sleep and then I've been waking up at 4 a.m. Um, I've just been exhausted and it's like put me back in a really weird place, like emotionally and mentally. So I'm kind of struggling with that. Um, obviously I know I'll be okay, but just some sore spots of things that I'm still trying to heal and process from, especially when I don't understand them and will never get an explanation for them. And I struggle with someone unwilling to communicate and work things out, um, or just come to like a more neutral place of things. I hate things being hateful and awful and rude and... And so I am having a very difficult time with that. Um, but some of the books I read this month have really helped pull me out of that. But um, yeah, that's kind of all my life updates. So the next section in this will be all of the books I read in August in their order. So I will let you enjoy that and I'll see you for an outro. So for the month of August, with the books that I read, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, you may hear my voice is a little more scratchy than usual. It's because yesterday I ate something um, that I was really sensitive to or allergic to, and it really affects my throat. It causes me to like cough a lot, which is gluten and wheat. <laughs> it's my own mistake. I made the choice to eat the very small brownie and I'm clearly paying for it. Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I digress. For the month of August, um, I'm going to just be sitting down, hopefully right after I read the book, to give a review of it, to help me with my, um, lack of short-term memory because of my TBI and, like, severe concussion. I just don't have very good short-term memory. Um, and I think a lot of people feel this way with books in general, or so I've read on Reddit, is that some people just, they read a book, but they just remember if they, the fact that they liked it or not, but they couldn't tell someone, like, specifically their favorite part or their favorite quote or what the whole entire book's theme is or things like that in general. So maybe I'm not alone in this at all, and maybe it isn't necessarily my own personal memory, but... I'm just trying to come about it from a different way. So 
to start I actually have two that I read and I'm a little late and I'm a little sunburned from reading while we were camping but the very first one which I talked about this in my July was that I was going to finish Animal Farm before the end of July I didn't I finished it on the first um, but I feel like everybody knows about this book there isn't really much that I need to say or can say it's an allegory for the Russian Revolution, basically. Um, it's about animals on a farm that want to have a revolution to, um, or seek to have a revolution to be able to run the farm themselves, um, to be treated fairly. Um, and this was required reading for most people growing up. Um, and I had said in the July wrap-up that it just like wasn't it, I think it was required for me But we got to pick between a few classical type books um, And I never picked this one up. So this is my first time ever reading this as a 32 year old, which I think is kind of crazy um, But I'm happy I read it and I feel like it was a good read and honestly it got me out of my reading slump from last month um, and I haven't just like that that's kind of all I've done. I haven't really done anything else besides read so far and today is The 7th of August. Yeah, like I said allegory for Russian Revolution however It's considered a banned book now So I don't know if it's necessarily required reading for people in high school or middle school But I think most people I know have read this book um, And it's a pretty simple read. I think it was 140 pages um, but it's kind of, and having never read this before, it's kind of, I found it to be very interesting that this is a 75th year anniversary edition and everything in this book that it discusses is still, you can categorize it to like still be an issue today. Um, you can see the manipulation, you can see, Basically, you can apply every single animal on the farm to some part of modern day society and it's still very true, which it's interesting to hear this call out. Um, I was talking to my husband about it because I, I like read passages from my books to him. I'm like, this thing made me think like I'm a big sharer. Um, but I had, obviously, he knew that I never read this, I bought this, and then he has the George Orwell, I think it's 19? 85? I don't know. So I've never read that one either. He has that, so I'll be starting that later. But yeah, just in general, good book. I think I gave it a, I would give it a three and a half out of five. I think I rated it three out of five, but that's Animal Farm. And this next one is called For One More Day by Mitch Album, and it's the author of Tuesdays with Maury, but I guess it's also the author of the Five People You Meet in Heaven, which I read that, I think, back at the beginning of college. Um, and I, again, can't remember much about that book, just remember it was a decent book. Um, but, has said in July, um, in my July wrap up, that this was a book I found among some of my dad's things. Um, in a keepsake box that I got from my grandma and I just like really had this pulling to it um, and we went camping we were gone for basically two days like we left Monday morning and came back and made it back by Wednesday mid-morning so two days basically we were gone for the two days and I read this in a day um, I thought this was a really easy read um, I didn't know necessarily like what I wanted to gain and maybe maybe that just says a lot about me maybe I don't need to be going into books looking to for something to gain but I thought this was a really good read I gave it a three out of five first and then I changed it to a four out of five um, and I cried at the last sentence of this book but it was only in the uh, what was it it was only in the epilogue um, and it was the very um, bottom of it. And it says, I know I had a day like that too in the bleachers of Little League Field, a day to listen to love, to apologize, to forgive, and to decide years later that this baby boy I'm carrying will soon be called proudly Charlie. My name is Maria Lang, but before it was Maria Benito. Chick Benito was my father, and if my father said it, I believe it. And of course I cried. Um, it kind of 
Interestingly enough, so I write in my journal almost every day, um, I had written a bunch of things in there that I was like struggling with about just wanting to be overthinking about certain specific things and it kind of like my frustrations were all addressed in this but the reason I liked this book so much was because it was a look back over his life and the very beginning of it says every um, family story is a ghost story or every family has a ghost story and of course it's not spooky but he basically goes through this journey with his mom in the book, kind of retelling his life through stuff that is happening with her, but also with him. So this is not spoiler, but he tries to kill himself. So trigger warning for suicide, but he tries to kill himself and isn't successful, but he goes almost like what I would consider to be not purgatory, but like, he is in a dreamlike state, almost like making a decision either to live or to die kind of thing. And he's with his mom through the whole thing. But the part I loved the most was he would talk about how he like, they're really, 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 really short chapters, just like really kind of like one off statement type things. But a lot of them were like times my mother stood up for me and then he'd follow it up with times I did not stand up for my mother and he would tell stories about how much he just didn't appreciate her growing up. Um, you know, it's a mother and son book, but I could relate it to my father daughter thing. Um, but I just thought it was a really quick, interesting read, but the end of it really choked me up because you could just see the struggle that someone goes through in their life. And I think a lot of us can obviously relate to that, but it was a good book, would recommend. I will probably pass this on, um, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> I'm gonna keep this one. I will pass this one on through the little library when we start to travel. And then currently right now, I am reading All My Puny Sorrows. I'm still reading the Enneagram of Belonging and The Body Keeps the Score, but All My Puny Sorrows so far, in the last two days, I've read three quarters of it, so I'm hoping to finish it today. Um, so you may see me in this shirt with a review for that or a different shirt, but I am loving that book. I'm actually like dog-earing pages and I'm underlining things with pen and it's just like hitting me on a different level. And so I'll have a review of that when I'm done with that. But that was the first two books of August, and I'll see you for the third and hopefully more, because it's already the seventh that I'm about to finish my third book, which is how I want to be. Um, but yeah, I'll check in with you when the next book's done. Hey, I'm <laughs> I'm jumping on to do my review of All My Puny Sorrows. I actually finished it over a week ago, but I just kept putting off sitting down to talk about it. Um, this is the first book that I've actually dog-eared pages on. Um, and if I could find it, this is the first book that I've taken the time to underline things, um, write on a few pages, you know, things that I liked. There's this part in here that says, my aunt nodded and told me that the woman would tell me that, but probably not for a while, maybe years, and then only silently in her thoughts. So I thought I wouldn't hear it, but one day I'd be walking down some street and feel a kind of lightness come over me. Like I could walk for miles and that would be the moment when the woman from the parking lot had a sudden under had suddenly understood my horrible outburst, that, if, that it had nothing to do with her or her husband or her child and that it was okay. And I wrote, is that why some days we feel peace out of nowhere? Um, yeah, I just, there's a lot of pages, the, you know, that I wrote stuff in here. And I think that this was, uh, I think I gave it four stars out of five. But our main character, Elf, or Elfrida, she goes by Elf, is like a world round pianist, um, supposed to go on another grand tour, but throughout her life, She's made multiple attempts, um, multiple attempts at suicide. And according to her, been unsuccessful, according to people in her family. Um, 
you know, she's been saved and they want and feel compelled to keep her alive. All My Puny Sorrows comes in, the name, comes in pretty quickly in the beginning, um, you know, self-identified by Elf. Um, but it's like a generational thing within the family that has happened. Um, and I think this book was just really interesting because in reading some of it, I feel like this is the first time I've read a book where someone was able to put into words feelings that I've had. Now, I'm not suicidal. I've never been. That's I don't mean anything like that just because I reference suicide in it. Um, but just like some of those harder, darker feelings and just like descriptors or like a way to put into words like feelings just about difficult times in your life. And this book really did that for me. And in a way, it gave me a lot more than I thought it would in that aspect. Um, however, I could see why, you know, looking at Goodreads and stuff, some people didn't have great reviews on it. Um, and it's because a lot of it read to me like a diary. A lot of it read to me like someone recounting stuff in their life. And I know that this author, um, Miriam Toes, I think is how you, Toes, Toes <laughs> is how you say her name. But I know that she's written a, a few other books, but a, um, a memoir. That's the word I was looking for. So I kind of want to read that because I guess this, this has a factor in like a big contributing factor of her actual life. So this is like a half real kind of book. Um, and I do believe that her sister actually did kill herself. I believe here at the back it says that. Let me just confirm. This is the very end of the acknowledgements. And finally to my beautiful sister Marjorie Ann Toa's comic genius badly missed. Um, but... I believe that this has some kind of like basing in reality of her actual life but it was written and I appreciated it I could see how a lot of people wouldn't but I appreciated it in the way that it just like almost was like word vomit from her brain and that's how I write my journal and that's how I speak <laughs> a lot of times so I just really connected with the fact that it felt like this whole thing was her journal just like spewing stuff out as it happened and and like recollecting over conversations she had with her sister or i mean again not entirely factually based this isn't her memoir but as far as the book goes with elf i feel like a lot of it because there's no um there's a lot of people like when they talk you know usually usually there's the parentheses you know, and everything breaking up, who says what. Like, there's multiple people talking throughout multiple parts of this book, but everything is almost told as if it's told through her perspective. And uh, I can't remember her full name, but she goes by Yoli. Um, you know, not, I guess, the main character, but not really. Um, that's the sister of Elf, and so she's the one that is kind of talking through this whole thing. But this book specifically has inspired me i believe her name is plant-based bride on here she's a bullet journal person and i've already had like discussions about how my bullet journal has basically turned into a reading journal but i will link i hope i remember i will link her video below that i just watched yesterday that made me feel like i should be doing that with my books because then in each section when she reviews each book for each month of her like whole reading journal she goes in and she writes quotes and like takes the picture of the book and like puts it in there and that just seems like such an awesome way to keep track of your books especially because some of these quotes and things that i wrote next to and underlined and dog-eared in here really connected with me and they are parts of the books that I would like to remember. So it inspires me, this book for sure inspires me to do that more with books in the future and not being so afraid of writing in them. 
but also trying to pull the things that I appreciate the most out of each book and mark that down somewhere else so when I think back or look back over those journals about the books that I've read, I'm able to recall certain things that made a big impact on me or I felt like taught me a lesson or a specific quote that really resonated with me. Um, but yeah, so that's something I think, I don't know when I would start it or how I would go about doing it, but I think that is something I would like to start doing. But yeah, that was a long-winded talk about all my puny sorrows. I do feel like about this much of the book at the end is just rambling. Um, and I do feel like it ends off, the book ends in a way that like, didn't feel finalized to me because it felt finalized back here um, when a significant thing happens. Um, no spoilers, but <laughs> something happens within this section and then the rest of this is still like that diary journal-y type feel, which again, I, I loved, but the, I say like the last sixth of it was just kind of like, I couldn't I didn't feel motivated to finish it, I guess, and I couldn't tell how I thought it would end because you already got to the point that the whole book was about to me. Um, but other than that, I think this was um, a good pick up, a good read, um, and in a way, like, helped me. Because when I was talking about reading this, I think in my book journal or in my um, book haul, I had said that I had a friend that was going through some of this, and. Um, it's given me not really like any more insight or help into like that type of situation but overall i do think it was just a generally good written a book that was written well and i appreciated it but that is all my puny sorrows and you can see behind me <laughs> the books that i'm currently reading right now the biggest one that i'm almost halfway through of and hoping to finish this next week um, which we'll go over, obviously, in this August book haul wrap-up. Not haul, wrap-up. Um, but this one should hopefully be next. On top of all my other ones, this is A Visit from the Goon Squad. I have 1984 that I haven't started. The Enneagram and The Body Keeps the Score, which I you can see, I think, right here. I'm still not exactly halfway through that, so that's just taking its time. But... Um, I'm almost at my goal. I think this marks 47 out of the 52 books of the year I wanted to read. And I am hoping I'll surpass my goal. Um, but yeah, moving on to the next book. Okay, let's chat about the language of flowers. I finished this one last night, was so pulled to finish the story, I probably read the second half of it after getting home from work. I take books with me to work, I get an hour lunch, so I'll eat maybe like the first 10-15 minutes and the rest of the time I read. Um, so I felt like I finally hit a good part yesterday at work, so when I got home I just felt compelled to plow through it. It was very predictable in the story, especially towards like the latter half, but I was so desperate for it to go predictably as I want it to without spoiling it. Um, it's very, it's interesting. So I didn't know what to expect with this, but the wrap up of it feels very fairy tale like even though, so it's like an angsty, fucked up version of a fairy tale, I guess is the best way to put it. And I'm glad for the book's sake it went that way. It gave me some interesting information to be completely honest. I think the dictionary at the back um, kind of is probably my favorite part. Um, and I think that's a big significance because the job I recently got a couple weeks ago, I work with nothing but flowers. Um, I work in nature with nature, which is just incredible and very healing for me. Um, and so it's interesting because I've been trying to remember specific names of specific flowers from work and then coming here and checking this and like, 
I think I said when I did a book haul about this or that this was like an upcoming read for me was that I have a friend who runs a, I guess like, um, what would you call it? Not an orchard, like a flower farm basically uh, with her and her mom. And she's taught me so much about it. And this is like a very real serious thing to her. Um, and I'm just like so fascinated by it. And what a dream that would be as an old lady <laughs> to have a flower shop or something. But who knows? I'm not saying that's necessarily my dream, but um, this makes me curious to dive more into more information about the language of flowers specifically. The book sprinkled that throughout it, but overall, you're following the main char character, Victoria Jones, um, through foster care and the different families and houses and group homes that she went through till she was emancipated at 18. Um, and then interestingly enough, how everything kind of goes full circle and how much the language of flowers really does have a hold over her life. Um, and then it becomes like her career and then there's even more significance with it in relationships and just other things of that nature without spoiling anything. Um, I, <laughs> I cried at the end um, and I think a lot of it really hit home for me, which is happening a lot in books that I'm reading and it's just snippets of stuff. And again, I did go through here. I didn't dog ear anything, but on a few pages, I did underline a few things. Um, but not much to do in this one because this is more just like storytelling obviously wasn't things about real life in any of the story I guess is what I'm trying to say um, no memorable quotes nothing I felt like I really learned <sighs> yeah I, I cried at the end of it of course initially I was like five star best read this year not the case um, that is still the memoir that I read. Um, I'll link it or put the name here. I'm just like blanking on it right now. Um, that's still my favorite read of the year so far. But overall, easy read. Definitely piques my interest even further of looking into the genuine language of flowers, even though it was a Victorian era thing. More so when it's like cultivated now, obviously, into modern day society. I believe some people actually do follow this um, within flower shops or things of that nature. I don't know how valid it is. Like I said, I work with flowers all day um, and it's not something that's like ever been brought up or discussed so far and I've been there for three weeks um, at this point. But yeah, I'm talking in circles, brings up, I already had interest and just furthers my interest in wanting to understand plants and flowers specifically better. Um, I already have the plan to get a lot of like the field guide of like identifying plants, identifying trees. I would love to pick up a book about like the language of flowers that isn't a novel um, and just see what I can learn from that, especially as we go to travel. I would love to be able to find a lot of these flowers out in nature. Um, and photograph them and keep a list of them and track them off. Um, I think my ultimate goal while traveling is to, I'm not exactly sure and I'm not putting myself in a box yet, um, but to kind of capture things along the way that I could then turn into either like a manual or a book, probably entirely self-published by myself, obviously self-published. Um, but just of the journey of traveling and the things learned along the way, um, which I know is not a new concept. A lot of people have done that. I digress. Overall, easy, simple read, 300 pages. And yeah, moving on. I both started a visit from the Goon Squad today, which I'm two chapters in, and I feel like I'm a little confused about tracking people specifically, but it's just a culmination of stories, um, is my understanding anyway, I don't know yet. Um, and then I also started 1984, um, and that's just because I've never read it, 
and I think I talked about like Animal Farm and of Mice and Men like going back to read classics that I was told to read in like middle school high school and never did so 1984 I started and I'm only a couple pages in I think that one might be a slow burn for me unless it like catches my interest somehow um but yeah Currently today though, I am focusing on the Enneagram of Belonging. Um, I just would like to make it further in that book. And as always, the slow burn for me, not in a bad way, is the um, the Body Keeps the Score, is the book. I had to think for a real minute on that, even though it's like right over there on my little shelf area. Um, the Body Keeps the Score, I do need to just sit down and keep going with that. I feel like I've learned so much. There's still so much to read in that. Um, I'm enjoying it still uh, it's just I have other things that are pulling my interest kind of all over so yeah but today my focus is to get at least another hundred pages into the Enneagram of belonging so we'll see how that goes um, and then I'll check in with you in the next book I'm in my office filming Minecraft stuff right now but I finished um, from the <laughs> A visit from the goon squad earlier today and since I've been giving wrap-ups with them pretty much as soon as I'm done reading them um, this is no different however this is probably the worst book that I read this year um, it has ties to music let me just read the back it says Benny is an aging former punk rocker and record executive Sasha is the passionate troubled young woman he employs here, Jennifer Egan brilliantly reveals their pasts along with the inner lives of the host of other characters whose paths intersect with theirs. With music pulsing on every page, A Visit from the Goon Squad is a startling, exhilarating novel of self-destruction and redemption. <sighs> yes and no. So I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that description or synopsis of the book. <sighs> music heavy, sure. Maybe it just doesn't like, I don't relate to the genre very much because I'm not a musician and I think that would be beneficial to someone to have that background for this. Um, but to be completely honest for me, this book felt like I was just, I really just felt like it was just word vomit, but like thought vomit, if that makes sense. This just goes to show you that life changes and can become better given certain circumstances, given things you've learned, just as you get older you mature more. That's basically what this book I feel like is about. But I just didn't vibe with the way that anything, I didn't vibe with the storytelling in it. I didn't like the way that the book read, I didn't like the way that it was like spoken. Yeah, I don't really know much else to say about it. I guess I just don't feel like every page has anything to do with music besides the fact that they literally mention it like I didn't get a musical vibe from anything it just got people complaining about their lives <laughs> which just it didn't teach me anything I didn't gain anything from it so I gave this a one out of five star um and we'll be saving this to put in the little libraries when we start to travel but that is a visit from the goon squad I'm hoping to at least read today is the 26th of August when I finish this one so I have a couple more days and I'm really pushing myself to finish the Enneagram of Belonging so I could put that in this wrap up before editing to get this out before the end of the month for my August reads but don't recommend did not like cannot wait to dump this in one of the little libraries but on to the next book let's push through for the Enneagram of Belonging and hopefully I'll be back with that book Fresh out of bed <laughs> for our bedhead review. The final book review of the books that I read, I think so far, that will happen in August. That was a really long way to say I finished the Enneagram of Belonging, A Compassionate Journey of Self-Acceptance um, by Christopher Hertz, I believe. Um, this was also one that was thrifted through that thrift haul, uh, book haul that I had probably over a month ago. Um, I gave this a three star. It was, it was an okay book. It, I appreciated, if anyone knows about the Enneagram, I'm a type nine. 
um, kind of too much. Like, I'm a Libra, I'm a type 9, I'm an INFP. Like, those things are so specifically me, it's kind of crazy. Um, which always just finds me in a place of being like so up and down about all of that stuff because I find it fascinating, but I don't want to make everything or I don't feel like I want to believe everything in my life is accurate because it's broken down to a type, if that makes sense. Sorry if you hear my dog crunching his food. Um, but I appreciated in this book that it broke down more where the Enneagram came from, the multiple different types. I think he said in here that one of the people who originated kind of the whole concept came up with 108 Enneagrams. So they, this book is like specific, excuse me, this book is like specifically telling you not to like typecast yourself per se, to just your type and the like, consumerism and the modern and the social like media take on all of this is he is grabbing his food from his bowl all the way over there walking it to he's like right here just out of frame and eating it <laughs> so I'm sorry if you can hear crunching but this really deep dives on the way that like because us as a society where we're at right now we crave so much like the instant knowledge, the instant gratification, everything to be broken down to such simple terms. And that's like what we can only really take in, especially like on a social media platform. And that the Enneagram and everything about you and your self acceptance and just understanding the not good and bad because he tries to characterize them as not necessarily being bad, but more like the positive negative, which is kind of the same thing about yourself and your type and your traits and uh, I mean it goes through here a lot like I wrote in here like sections for me for type 9 um, but it it isn't just like you flip through and an entire chapter is about your Enneagram type he talks through the Enneagram, where it came from, so there's like a lot of knowledge-based information like through history in here, which I found a little bit hard to get through because that's just not my like favorite genre. Um, but I don't know. Um, I appreciated the sections, and you actually skip kind of a lot of pages in here because when they do, like here's an example. When they do break down two types, they're talking about your um, kid life crisis in here, which is like a big thing in the Enneagram, which I didn't know about before this book. Um, but now that I've looked up some other stuff about it, it's kind of like a top tier thing they're focusing on right now on social media. But here's like type one, type two, um, you know, so you end up skipping a few pages. Like for me specifically, I'm at the top of the Enneagram circle and I'm a type nine. So it's like, obviously I didn't read any of these pages because those don't apply to me. And then here's, you know, type nine. And then something I had underlined over here. Um, what I underlined, it says, true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, our <laughs> what I underlined over here, what I underlined on this page says, true belonging only happens when we present our authentic and perfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our, our level of self-acceptance. Do you have to come and bring your food all the way up over here to chew it? Huh? You have to bring your food right here. Just right here to chew it. Thank you so much. It's so sweet of you. He's going to be two in a week, which is crazy. You can just see his ears. <laughs> okay, so that was my final read, I believe, of August. It is August 28th when I'm filming this, so there's this book. Otherwise, I am currently reading, I just started this last night, so I'm only the first chapter in. It's Everything I Thought I Knew <laughs> by Shannon Tacoka. I am awful with people's names. I don't know much about this besides the fact that I know it's a girl in high school that has either a heart replacement or heart surgery given this. And so I'm, to be honest, right up front, I'm a little put off by it. I got this on Thriftbooks like two, three years ago. 
um, which I just placed another thrift books order. So I'll have a book haul coming soon. I got like 11 or 12 books, um, but I, I don't know what to expect out of this. I have a hard time mentally myself, like in a mental kind of situation. I think that's the wrong way to describe this, but I have a hard time wanting to take advice from a teenager now that I'm in my 30s. <laughs> so maybe I'm wrong, maybe this book, because it was written clearly by someone much older than that about, it was written by this lady, um, about a much, like about a teenager. So it'll have her knowledge and her perspective as if a teenager can have that, I guess. Um, so that's like always a thing that I find really weird in books, so I, I have a little hesitation, but I'm obviously gonna give it a shot. I've heard great reviews about it, so we'll see what happens. But like I said, I'm only a chapter and I'm not gonna finish this before the end of August. So hopefully you'll be seeing or hearing about this in September. I have not, I have not started this one yet. Also, this one came from that big thrifted book haul. Um, and this one's Moonwalking with Einstein, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything by Joshua Four. Um, I want to read this because of, I think, I, and I'll mention again when I do review it, I haven't started this. It's about memory, hacking your memory, hacking the ability to remember things. And as someone who has a TBI um, and has permanent memory loss and really bad short-term memory now since my accident, I am curious to see what this can offer me. So I'm gonna be starting this one as well. My other current read right now, which you could see the little thing sticking out, I've just barely started, is a George Orwell's 1984. Um, this is my partner's book, but it is annotated by someone else in here, which has been really interesting to read a book with annotations, like here's an example. Oh, as I throw this down. I'm on this page, which is not very far in, but you can see this person has underlined and annotated things. So I'm kind, this will be the first book I will have ever read um, where someone else has annotated things. And so far, just in those couple of pages, I don't understand why they're underlining things that they have, but you know, whatever. To each their own. So we're reading 1984. And then of course, the last read, which I still have not made any more progress on besides maybe a chapter in August, is The Body Keeps the Score. Um, again, not a bad book, just heavy. I, I, don't, I have like a block wanting to read this and I don't know exactly why, but my goal is to finish this in September because my partner wants to read it. I told him he could pick it up now um, and just, I mean, he won't probably get to my bookmark anytime soon in here because I'm halfway through. I'm all the way on page 215 in here. So he could start it, but he wants to wait till I'm done so then I have more motivation to finish it because I think this would be a really great book for him and everything that we're going through with like reparenting yourself and trauma and healing and just basically everything this book covers. So I want to get this finished so he can read it as well. But yeah, that's my August wrap up of reads. I'll be reviewing what everybody else has read. I am such a sucker for reading vlogs and book hauls and I'll have a book haul coming soon. But that's everything that I read in August and I feel really good about it. I am with finishing the Enneagram. My goal this year was 52 books and finishing the Enneagram of Belonging puts me at 50 books for the year. So I'm 16 books ahead of schedule according to Goodreads. Um, and you can find my Goodreads linked always below. Um, but I'm gonna hit my goal and surpass it, which is wild. Cause I think last year my goal was like 40 and I barely made it. <laughs> so definitely stepping up my reading game and we're gonna surpass the goal in September, which is awesome. I'm not gonna extend the goal. I'm just gonna keep reading. Um, but yeah, that's it for my August reads, and I will see you guys in the month of September. Um, hope you had a great August. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hope you had a great August, and I'll see you guys in September with our, I'll have a book haul for sure, and then obviously a September reads. 
um, and then hopefully like a vlog and then obviously some gaming stuff. So I'll see you guys in those. Bye. Say bye. Bye.